my story so that you don't miss out on the points, right? Okay, so for me, ICANN is just more than an exam to start with. It was, it was more than an exam. So I see it as part of my life due to my own um, profession, because right from school, I've wanted to be an auditor, right? So, and I know that for you to be respected, for you to get the kind of job you want, you have to be chartered. Now, that means that I have to pass through ICANN. So it was like my career and I put everything into it. My strength, my resource, my skill, everything, including prayers too, not just for me, for my parents as well. That one is very, very important, right? So it was more than just an exam for me. So my journey for ICANN, right? My journey to writing ICANN started started when I was in um, university, right? So there was one particular day that ICANN came to our school. They came for accreditation program. And during the program, one the person that represented the um, the body, I mean, I can uh, just came on board and announced that is there anybody that is shattered amidst us? You know, we have a lot of students there in the program that day. And somebody came out and, you know, they had to do some verification. And instantly the person got some rewards, got cash, got laptop, and some other facilities. So that really, really motivated me to like. It's like it's like this icon has more to offer than just being chattered, right? So I've only had it in mind then that I'm going to write a can and I'm just going to put in my best after school. So there was one thing they told us then that if you finish with the first class, that icon is going to be responsible for your exams from your skill. So I started from skill and up to your professional level. So but then there are some um, conditions attached to it right some of those conditions are on icon website so i won't go into that that now right so there are some conditions to to fulfill for you to be qualified for that scholarship so one of it is graduating with first class right from that program that day i made up my mind that whatsoever it takes that I'm going to finish with first class, not just because of ICANN alone, but because of other benefits that was um, attached to being a first class graduate. And glory be to God. So that that was achieved. Then I started my ICANN journey. Okay, so the first thing I will tell you if you are preparing for ICANN is for you to, to be self-aware, like know yourself understand your pattern. ICANN is not just any kind of exam that you can approach with the way you've been studying in, in university, right? I've heard story of you know, different students, how they, they, they prepare for exam while, while they were in school. And some of us, we are guilty of that. Most of us, what we do is crash reading. Right, we read maybe like three days to the exam. That's when we start reading. I'm also guilty of that too. But when it comes to ICANN, it doesn't work that way. Even if you are a genius, right? If you don't even need to open your book, there are still some things that you will need to learn before you can pass ICANN. So you need to understand yourself. I was talking about self-aware, self-awareness, I mean to say. So you have to understand yourself. You have, you have to understand the time that you assimilate best. Me as a person, if I want to read, regardless of the stress I've gone through in a day, once I have my sleep, let's say for three hours or four hours, and I can wake up and my body is refreshed, I can take up any topic I will read and I will understand. So I do more of night reading than day reading. So when I'm reading during the day, I'm just trying to, um, I'm trying to revise what I have studied overnight. So you may see me during the day doing some other things and not minding 
whether I have an exam to write, it's because I have prepared overnight. So I believe night reading is is that uh, is best, right? Because it has worked if if uh, effectively for me. So I read mostly at night. I've studied myself. I know that that is when I I I I achieve good results when it comes to studying. So some people they can read for long hours. Some people they they can they have to break their reading down into small hours like read for one hour take a break then continue the reading take a break so you have to understand yourself because if i tell you that oh if you want to pass i can you need to study during the night you need to be able to read four hours during the night you might not be able to do that and you get frustrated so for me i understood that part of me that night reading is my own thing some people, when they want to read, they have to play music when they are reading so that they can understand what they what they are reading. That's their own pattern. Some people, they have to eat. Like, they must have a snack around them for them to understand what they are reading. Some people, is when they wake up in the morning. And some people, is doing the day. So you have to understand yourself. That is the first thing, self-awareness. Another thing is your motivation. Why are you writing ICANN? Are you writing ICANN because your friends are writing ICANN? Are you writing ICANN because people say that if you if you are chartered, you have a better chance of an employment opportunity? You have to get your motivation. Like me, I already said from the beginning that ICANN was more than just an exam. I, I saw it as my career. I saw it as a major milestone that I must achieve if I'm going to progress as an auditor, right? So if you are able to get your, your motivation right, I am writing I can because I want to be shattered so that this and this can happen. So when I can comes as a challenge, because of that purpose, because of the reason, because of that result that you want to achieve, you'll be able to do as much as it's required of you so that you can pass i can but when the motivation is just that ah, it's my daddy that says i should go and write i can when they ask you to study that motivation will not be there for you to study so the first thing about me is self-awareness all right another thing is is um um what i will term as structuring your preparation right so while I was preparing for my skills exam, um, I was going to write May 2022 diet. And I know that I was going to write five papers. I was exempted from audit because I finished, um, I had BSc, right? So I was exempted from audit. So I started my preparation December 2021 for an exam that I'm going to write May 2022, right? So. Because I know that this is I can. I've heard a lot. I've heard a lot. Many of the stories I've heard are not even encouraging. I've heard stories about people writing one paper more than six times, more than seven times before they finally pass it. You know, it now looks like I can looks like like an exam that was that that was ordained by God that when you pass it like this, it's like everything about you will be so happy that even your family, <laughs> even your family will, will be rejoicing with you. In fact, I've seen, I have a friend that when he got, when he got qualified, they, we had to do small celebration for him because it's, it's not easy. So sometimes I feel like, ah, is I can't want spiritual exam that you have to go spiritual plus physical before you can pass. So those stories, um um are not good right they are not encouraging but i found my motivation which i've which i've explained earlier so i started my preparation december 2021 for an exam that i wanted to write um, may 2022 so what i did is one paper per month i remember i started with taxation i read taxation for the whole of for the whole of um, December 2021, January 2022, I went to another paper like that, like that. So I ensure that I have enough time to study on my on my study packs, right? And to capital, I didn't even attend any tutorial during my skill level. So it was self-study. And I know that if I'm going to do self-study, I have I must, I must, I must uh 
make time available. During those period, I was serving, right? And I had some privileges. When you are serving, there is less expectations from you, wherever is your PPE. And you also have a day in the week for you to go for your CDS and every other stuff. So that gives me a kind of time to relax during the day and read during the night. So I ensure that I structured my preparation. The two materials that I used were the icon pack and the Pathfinder question and answer, right? And those are your major materials. If you are studying for ICANN, they are your number one resource that you must, you must approach. You must go through them before you can go through other materials. Other materials is just needed when you studied, studied a topic and you did not understand the way it is being described in the, in the study pack then you cannot consult other materials to, to brighten and to, to broaden your understanding, right? So that is when other materials can come in. But if you have not gone through the study path, you won't even know what the examiner is expecting from you. You won't know what the institute wants you to read, wants you to focus on. If you just go through other materials without passing through ICANN. So when you take your 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 study pack as your number one um, preparation book, when you go through it from beginning to the end, don't overlook any topic. I can can be so funny. People say that I can is unpredictable, but I can tell you that there's one thing that is very certain about I can. I can will not set question outside your syllabus. This will never happen. So, and that syllabus, they have prepared a study pack to help you to go through it. So if you now leave the material that the Institute has provided for you to go and study other materials, that means you are missing the point at that point. You have to focus on your study material first provided by the Institute. And there's also ICANN and Pathfinder, the ones that, that, that shows you the questions and then um, the suggested solution. If you go through those solutions, you will see the way the questions are being answered. By the time you compare the Pathfinder and your study pack, you will see similarities. So that is how you have to prepare yourself. You need to study the Pathfinder so that you will know how to answer the question. Majority of the questions they ask us in the exam, or we know them. In fact, some of us can even teach others. But then the examiner is expecting some keywords, is expecting some terminologies. The examiner is expecting some steps for you to follow in arriving at your answer. So if you skip those steps and you just go to the answer, fine, you may be correct, but you have missed some points along the way. And ICANN is one, one, ICANN exam is one exam that you have to be careful about keywords. Just for instance, now, if you want to define audit, there's no way you would define audit that you would take keywords like, um, independence out, you will take keywords like true and fair view out, you will take keywords like a critical examination. All those key points are what I can are looking for. I can is looking for in your in your exam. So if those keywords are missing, even if you write one page talking about a question, you may not get the mark that you are supposed to get. So I can focuses on the principle and the focuses on the keywords or terminologies related to the questions they are asking you. Right. So, as I was studying, I have my ICANN pack, and trust me, what I did, me, if I want to study, if I'm truly studying, you know, I always have my own chapter. In fact, I summarized the study pack for each of those papers I wrote. I summarized them in my own chapter to an extent that I don't need to read the study pack again, and I read my own notes. It's just as if I was going to lecture, and they were teaching me each topic in those parts. So I have my jottings. So if there's any, any time that I have to go and refresh my memory about a topic, I don't go back to that bulky pack. I mean, how many times do I have, how much time do I have for me to be stored, to be reading 700 pages? I have summarized them into, I think then I was using 60 leaves notes. So I have summarized them. And let me tell you, you will, you will you will you will enjoy 
reading your own and written point. Like when you read your jottings yourself, you will enjoy it and it sticks more to your brain because you have been able to explain it the way you understand and not leaving the key points out. Are we getting it? Can we drop some energy if everything I've been saying is is um is has been fantastic so far? Let's drop some emoji. Okay. All right. So I've mentioned self-awareness. Understand yourself, how you study, the time that you 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 study, I mean the time that you assimilate best, right? Understand your the environment that you need to be to study. That is self-awareness. The next thing that I was talking about is structure your preparation, right? Many of us, we wait till time is before we start reading. For I can, it won't work like that because you have a lot to cover. Hmm? To study is very difficult, right? It's hard to study. But if you can manage it well, you will find that that is very easy. One of those key things that helped me was that I had a longer time frame to prepare for my exam from December to um, April, right? From December to April. Those were the periods I used to prepare for my exam. I know some of us now, we, 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 maybe we are just starting our preparation as at now. It's never too late. If you can speed up your preparation, you can still meet up with it. So uh, I was talking about structure your preparation. Some people, they start with five they start preparing for five um papers at the go along the way they start dropping they start dropping till they finally write one at the end of the day that that is not helpful if you are going to write five be determined from the beginning that i'm preparing for five exams if you are going to write two be be determined that it's just two so that you have enough time to prepare imagine you prepare for five papers as that you have read read from tax read from fr read from pm read from preserves some of them the topics are looking alike the solutions are looking alike you are finding it difficult to differentiate to differentiate between topics and solutions they look so confusing and along the line you drop two it's okay it's not three the time that you have used to study that to that you drop you could have used it to focus on the remaining period and have enough time to study so from the beginning know, know the number of papers that you want to write and stick to it create the schedule for yourself plan i'm going to be reading four hours per day I'm going to be reading two hours per day, starting from this period to this period. Know the number of time that you, you will allocate to your study per day. For me, I told myself that I was going to study four hours every night. So most of the time, when I get back from work, I get back, I get back around 9, 10, right? So 9, after I've eaten my dinner, of course, then I sleep. So I have, I have my alarm set for 12. So when I wake up 12, I try to do some gymnasium. I try to do small exercise so that I can be fully awake. Let's say one, I'm already conscious and I'm awake. From one to five, I'll be, I'll be with my book reading four hours straight. And I did that consistently from December till the date of the exam. So another thing is consistency. Once you structure your preparation, be consistent. It's not going to be easy at first, but by the time you try to be consistent about it, you do it the first day, the second day, the third day, your body will adjust. Your body will adjust to that, um, that situation and consciously and unconsciously, around that time that I used to wake up to read, you'll find out that you could not, you, you would not be able to sleep. And that is when your body masters it. Everything about you now functions properly to reading. So another thing that I also want to talk about is seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. Your material is your number one. Your study pack is your number one resource, like I have said. Seek knowledge. You read. When you have gone through the pack and you still do not understand, then you can visit other materials. And I advise people to attend tutorial. It's very, very important. If you know that 
your background you don't have background in accounting and you don't have anything to do with accounting from start and you want to write i can fine people are doing this i, I was i even heard the story about somebody that i think studied um was in yoruba something relating to language linguistic right and the person did well at first the person cleared all our papers so people are doing it right so attend tutorials ask questions but then when you go to tutorials right most of us we depend on what we want to get from the tutorial center we only depend on what they teach us at the tutorial center that is not the right way to prepare for high can it is not the right way you must do your own personal study you must lead on your own so by the time you have gone through a topic, say for instance, uh, in FR group accounting now, you've gone through it, you've read some things you understand, some parts you do not understand. When you now go for the tutorial, by the time they are now explaining that concept, you will try to relate it with what you have read and you'll be able to ask questions that, okay, yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's not clear to me, sir. Can you please explain? Can you please elaborate? Can you use another example? Even if you have to, if you have tried to solve a question that you did not get, you can build the question and that, sir. Okay, I tried to do this. I tried to solve this question during my own personal study, but I'm not getting the answer. And the person will explain to you, the person will break it down for you, then it becomes more clearer. So it's just as if you are going to, to the stream with a, with a cup, empty cup. So if you have done your own personal study, it's like you are filling the cup up to half. When you now go to the stream, by the time you get there, when you get to the tutorial center, it's as if you are now going to additional, um, you are going to another place that you have enough water that you can tap from and fill your cup to the brim. So by the time you are asking questions, you are trying to you know understand some concepts in group account, right? By the time you are doing that, it's as if you are filling your cup to the brim. Okay, so personal study is highly recommended, highly recommended. Study and attend tutorials. By the time you match the two together, it will help you. Then another thing that helped me for me is I solved a lot of past questions. <laughs> and I was preparing for my for my skill exam. After I have dotted my point in a separate exercise book and i have a series of a4 papers it's also sad that those papers those those papers are not with me if i bring them out they are up to like there are so much that i had to find them in a separate envelope so i had a4 papers that i used to solve questions i solved 10 diets and you know that each paper has seven questions for each diet i'm solving seven questions for 10 diets so that that makes 70 questions altogether. Imagine you solving 70 questions for just one paper. So even if I can is going to bring a new question, which 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 um in recess they repeat question. If I can't is going to bring a new qu question, you are going to have an idea on how to solve it. There's no way you won't be able to solve. You will understand the concept, you will understand the steps, you will understand the process that you need to pass through to get your solution, even if the account, even if the questions, I mean to say, is new. But out of the seven questions that I can reset, you will definitely see a question that you have treated before. I can guarantee you that if you can solve as much as 70 questions for just one paper, and you can only do that if you have structured your preparation. Like I said, if you have if you have started your preparation long time before the exam date, you have enough time to go far in your solutions. I mean, in your past question. So, and lastly, what I will also share is um, you need God. <laughs> There's no way you will do. I can that you will not you 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 will not call God to come and help you. I remember during my decision, I was attending tutorial. We used to attend fellowship then. So our fellowship leader used to tell us, I can is 100% physical, 100% spiritual. You cannot neglect the spiritual aspect. And you don't have to wait till when the exam is getting near before you now start praying. Even as you are starting, you start praying so that God can help you to focus, I mean, to direct your path to the topics that, that, that can come out. You know, some of us, we have 
this testimony that ah i've seen the question before you know we we're just discussing and somebody just brought the textbook and we studied it and low and beauty came out as one of the questions so you need god you need god to excel in i can so those are the points that i want to share with us this evening those are the things i did that helped me when it comes to i can ah. <laughs> there's this story in the bible that i normally used to compare like i i use it as as a case study for Icon. Icon is like a Goliath and you are the David. Right. So if you look at that story very well, David did not start fighting the day he met Goliath. He has started long before. So if you are going to prepare for Icon, regardless of the papers you are writing, even if it is just one, don't underrate that paper. Start your preparation long before the exam date. And Thanks to Golight, I learned that they, they, they started 100 days challenge and then, um, you know, for people to come on board to join the challenge so that you can be consistent. You have peer, um, you have groups to read with. You have uh, people that you can reach out to, to ask questions. You have people that can encourage you when you get tired along the way. I mean, doing one particular thing for 100 days is tiring, it's boring, but with, people and products like grow light you'll be able to you know do that without stress so i said i was going to share some part of my story with you when i was preparing for my skill exam so i've told you the major things that i did right i start i started early i started early i understood the period i assimilate best which i capitalized on right i made um i can study back and um Pathfinder, my first study material before consulting other textbooks. Then um, I solved um, 10 diet pass questions. Then I leveraged on my environment. When I was studying for, when I was studying for ICANN, uh, it's as if I was not existing in the house because I practically do nothing. The only thing I, I, I used to do is to sleep, eat, take my bits and go to the office. Then when I come back, eat, sleep, sometimes shower, sometimes I'll be exhausted. But because I have trained my body to always stay awake between 12 to 5, it became my conscious and uh, subconscious part of me. And I find it easy to wake up at night and read. So at first, it will be very, very difficult. Like, it will be difficult, very hard to do. So you have to leverage on your family. What I used to do is that then I would tell my mom that I have set alarm for so 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 time. Paraventure, you are awake. Once it is 12 o'clock, wake me up. So as I'm telling my mom, I'm telling my brothers too. Once it is 12 o'clock, any one of you that is awake, I show you I am awake before you sleep. So you have to leverage on your environment. I know that some of us probably we are staying alone and um, you know we don't have anybody. So you can call one of your fire away friends to, to serve as your watchman for you. Once it is the person can keep on calling you repeatedly till you are awake so that you can start your reading. Those are the stuff that I do. So when I was preparing for my for my exam, when I was preparing about three weeks to I think from four weeks actually, four weeks to my exam date, I lost my phone. And majority of all these um, materials that I have, they are in soft copy. Ah, it looks as if <laughs> the end of the world is here. The study parts, the past question, other material, videos, and voice notes from my colleagues, everything I lost then. But thank God that I had a jota that mm -hmm. I've used to summarize all the topics and I have my solutions to the 70 questions that I was solving. Those were the things I relied on. Right. There was even some time, there was even a time that I started going to Sabai Cafe when there was no light. I had to go to Sabai Cafe. I'll pay for charging, just charging of my phone and my laptop. Then that was basically what I was doing. I would go to the Sabai Cafe then. I would read, read from morning to evening, then I'll go back home and relax. So, because I have started early, 
around April, what I was just doing was revision. I was reading my jotting and I was revising the solutions that I have. So it was easy for me to easily cover um, a paper in a day. Okay. Uh, uh, I believe there's a session for question and answer. So I will answer your question, Chuku Bube. I will answer your question. So because I have started early, Okay, I thought someone was talking. So because I have started my preparation early, I had enough time for revision too. So I remember a particular day, I took my tax, my tax jota. I started reading from beginning topic by topic, topic by topic, I was reading. So because it was, it was my own handwriting. I was the one that coined those sentences. I was the one that did that solution. So as I'm reading it, it's very easy for me to quickly read, read, go through. I read my book over, over, and over, and over again. To such an extent that when I remember a topic, I know, I know the page that the topic is. I know the first three lines. I know the point that have um that have highlighted in my children so it's really made prepare, uh, preparing for icon to be easy for me because all of this right so i started my revision three weeks three or four weeks before my exam and this is how i did my revision the last the first paper that i was going to have was was my last paper to revise so that it will still be fresh in my brain when I'm when I'm going to the exam. So that was how I prepared for my skill exam, five papers. And one of the conditions they gave us for the scholarship was that once you fail a paper, you are going to fund it yourself. And you only have two trials. If you fail it the first time, you fail it the second time, then the scholarship will be forfeited. So there was really pressure on me not to fail. So I just have to give it all that it takes to ensure that <laughs> I maximize the scholarship. And I think the best um, reward that I can give I can for that is to win a prize, which God helped me to achieve. Because when I saw my result, honestly, I was not even preparing for a, for, for a prize whatsoever. I was just preparing for me to just have 50. Because the past month is 50. Oh, all okay. I just need is 50. So I was just preparing to, to ensure that when I get to the exam or out of the seven questions, I'm able to answer questions that will give me that 50. But due to my level of preparation, when I got to the exam or for each of those paper, I have understanding of practically five of the seven questions that was asked. So solving those questions was not a problem for me. And I was able to tackle them. Those in some papers, I had time management issue, like my PM. I had already solved one question. It was on cash budget question TD. I can remember clearly 2022. I already solved, I started solving the cash budget. You know, the way cash is one month flows to another month. The second, the next month flow, flows like that. And we have to prepare cash budgets for like six months. So I started solving, I've done my workings. Then I went back to read the question along the line, and I saw that I have made a mistake. My God. Ah, that <laughs> is like this. I wanted to cry. So what did I do? I started all over again. So that really affected me in the numbers of questions that I saw because I could not really, really solve question one due to that, because I I had to start my workings all over again. Do you get? So I had um that was the only that was that was one of those um challenges that I had during the exam. Oh, but because my preparation, so let me say it's perfect, but at least it's solid to give me 50. I was able to pass all my all my papers at once. So that is about my uh my my study journey how i studied for icon i read from the beginning of the of the uh, of the chapter to the end of each 
of each uh, paper that I took in um, ICANN. To study does not mean just reading. It means reading, understanding, and jotting. You yeah. read first, you understand what that sentence is saying, then you put it in your own word. The way you have been able to construct it in your jotting, that is exactly how you'll be able to provide answer in the exam or if i've understood the definition of an of 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 a principle in i can let's say i want to define cash basis now if i already understand what cash basis is and i've put it down in my own words in my jota and i've gone over it over and over and over once i keep reading it like that it goes it stores in my subconsciousness that whenever i see cash i'll be able to divine it without even thinking twice and that is how you see people they are able to answer questions very well okay so to study means you read you understand then you jot that is just the process whenever you see the word study just let it be within your mind now that to study means i read this sentence i understand it i process and i understand it then i'm able to recall it in my own words without missing out the key point so you have to study you have to um there's something that i call over reading yes because i had to do that for pm i did that for pm i did over reading like i have to over understand <laughs> this particular concept if there's any word like that because you know pm is very corny so if you don't understand understand and understand you will not be able to solve any question so there are some topics that you have to read read and never get tired of reading until your exam day so for fr you will notice that um the questions that i can set like i have said the icon will not set question that is outside the syllabus. So you will see some people, they will say that eh, the question that I, I mean, the part of the part that I read, I can't do not set question from those areas. Are you the body? Are you the examiner? Examiner has told you to read from chapter one to 20 and you decided to read just part. What gives you the assurance that the question is going to come from the part that you read? So. I can't is unpredictable. Fine, they can set question from any angle, but then they have given you the study part to help you prepare. So read and understand every part of it. There's one topic in um, in taxation. Then I think the topic is a uh, luxury tax. I can has never set question on that. I'm not sure I can have set any question on that topic, right? But I also read that part just in case just the case question comes from that place so that i will not be stranded i will not be stranded when i'm preparing for exam i will tell myself cover everything so that if you cannot answer question a you'll be able to answer question b if you cannot answer c you'll be able to answer d if you cannot answer d you have e to answer so don't say that i want to study one part i will leave one. cover everything so you can use mnemonics you know all these mnemonics like maybe first letter of each point use it to form a word and store it to your brain so that when you want to answer the question you'll be able to record. i do that a lot too those are some of the tips that i used so when it now comes to exam days how do i how do i manage myself how do i manage my time you know that some of us if they even give us more than three and a half hours let's say they give us seven hours we will still not finish the exam because we always have new ideas fresh ideas new sentences new points to add to add you will keep on populating populating the the uh our, our answers to the question so but they've given us just three and a half hours for those papers so how do you manage it effectively when i enter exam or oh, the first thing i usually do on the practical day of any exam that i've ever written first thing is that i get to the exam all earlier than expected let's say maybe one hour before the exam right i identified my seats i know which all i know which number i ensure that all of those ones are done even before the exam starts i sit on my seat then i start revision that is one thing because my first paper was fr and it's really affected my performance because um doing doing that time doing may 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 2022 diet i think schools were schools were i think there was a strike so some venues were affected so they there was like 
um, overpopulation in my own venue. So it's as if they brought more people to my venue than usual. So the number and arrangement and, and so on was scattered. One issue that I, I, I encountered on my first paper effort was that I could not locate my seat on time. So some people had already started exam while me, I was still, me and other people we were still roaming about trying to locate our seats. So by the time I was finally able to get my seat, I was destabilized. I was destabilized. I don't even know how to start my exam again. Now, reading the exam, you know, further added to it, I was totally confused. So it had to take me some minutes before I can regain myself and I say, okay, let me start um prepare, let me start answering my questions. So first thing you want to do on your exam day is to get to the exam at least one hour before. Let's say for other circumstances that are beyond your control, 30 minutes before, so that you can locate your seat, put your your bags and everything that you are coming with in a place that is okay. The only thing that will take you out is when it is time for exam. So when I get settled like that, I do my revision. And when I'm revising, I don't go with pack. I don't go with the study pack anymore. I only go with my jota what I have jotted and the past questions that I have with me. Remember I said that because I was the one that wrote those jotings, it was very easy for me to read. And it's something that I've read over and over and over and over again. It's just as if before you finish one sentence, you already know what next, what next, what next. So within, don't let me exaggerate, let me just say maybe within two hours, I can finish all my jotings on the paper. So if I have gotten to the, if I got into the exam or early i can cover my jottings from beginning to the end even before the exam start so if there's anything that i have forgotten i have the opportunity to read it then so after that you get all your writing materials ready ensure that you're not even leaving anything at home you don't forget anything and when it's time for exam when your question is given out to you this is the trick that i used to use it's not actually a trick it's just me leveraging on my strength I know that question one is compulsory. Whether I like it or not, I'm going to answer it. So I don't bother reading it first. I go to section C. <laughs> That's where I start from. Section C. Because I know section C is very easy to solve. It's not as hard as question one. So I go to section C first. I look at the two questions there. Look at the one that I, I think, no, three questions. I mean to say, we have three questions there, right? I I look at the two that I can solve best, and that is where I start from. That is where I start from. During my case, Effa, they asked us question, I think question relating to um, this conceptual framework uh, that was talking about all this um, matching concept, all this um, consistency, um, all those principles, accounting conventions, that was what was in my own section, say, and few calculations. So it was very easy for me. And I will encourage as many people that are connected to this webinar today, always start with section C. Section C is just 15 marks, right? The questions there are less tricky, less confusing. They are almost direct. So when you start from section C, you have, you have um, two questions to answer there, and it gives you 30. Let's say, for instance, you're able to tackle those two questions very well the best of your ability okay let's say for one or two reasons you will not be able to get 50 50 marks let's say you have 12 and 11. 12 and 11 is um 23 12 and 11 yes that's 23 marks how many marks do you need more to make 50 27. now you come to your section b section b has 20 marks each and you have to solve two which is 40. So let's not say for one reason or the other, you are only able to solve just one correctly and you have 18 out of 27 that is left. I'm already doing the analysis and that is how I calculate it. Before I solve question, I predict my, my, my likable um, mark for each of those questions, then I go for the best. So if, I, if I'm assessing session B, I know that I have to get 40 from me. Let's say for, for any reason, I'm only able to solve one question very well and I get 18 marks. Maybe the second one, I'm able to solve some fragments and out of it, the only thing that I can get is 10 marks. 
or let's even say five worst case scenario that's already 23 23 plus 23 i already have 46 so is it in question one that i'm not able to get at least 10 marks for me to score 50. so that's how i start i start from section c i answer the two questions very well and the good thing is that if you start from section c you'll be able to manage your time effectively compared to starting with question um, question one because question one is always bulky always confusing always yeah. technical, always yeah. tricky <laughs> question one we we take we take your three and a half hours before you know it the next thing you will just remember is that the examiner are telling you you have five minutes more and you have not even attempted the question very well you are just starting so that has been one of the challenges that many people pass maybe because you have read a line in question one and now looks like a topic that you have saw before you are excited. Please keep that excitement. Don't, don't use that excitement there. <laughs> go to section C and go and start from section C. That energy, that excitement. For the fact that you have even seen that question before is a leverage yeah. that you tap into. So that means that even if you have lesser time to solve that question, because you have seen it before, and that excitement that you know it, you can write a lot within 10 minutes you can write a lot and that applies to calculation fr tax and even pizza that we are talking about today you can write a lot from those um from from in those papers you can write a lot so when i start from section c i move to section b i answer <laughs> everything that i can do then i go to section a the odogu <laughs> The most tricky question now let me now tell you let me give you another trick again when you receive your question paper for the first five minutes it will look as if everything you have in your brain has disappeared if anybody has felt like that in any exam yes, can you so uh, sure yeah. that's what i'm saying is correct okay okay all right so so when you when when you <laughs> all right. So when you see your exam question says everything in your head will look like oh your memory has failed you. Let me tell you what I used to do. I close my eyes. I breathe in. I breathe out three times. I used to go into my exam or with table water. Right. I think it's allowed. So I go into table water. I drink water. I close my eyes and i open my hands but i calm down then i now go to section c section c has always been my favorite because there's no way i will not know how to answer question c so when i start from question c i flow to question b i flow to section a okay section c section b and section a and with that and with the help of god favor from god <laughs> and uh message of uh, i can you will get your 50 marks all right so when you when you face that situation don't be don't be don't be bothered it is normal it's just anxiety it's just exam tension like you don't know what to do that is what is just happening to you and it's normal even people that win prize is normal even if you score 94 95 99 you will feel like that when immediately you receive your question but you just have to calm yourself you have to control yourself then go to your section c i advise people start with the question that you can get the best mark from start with that write it very well use all your energy and one shocking thing is that if you gain momentum from that section c or any question that you can answer best aside from question one don't start with question question one don't start with it it's going to take your time and it's going to make you lose track of time so just leave it come to section three answer question that you can solve best then build your momentum from that but then you will get to that question that you feel like you don't know how to solve. You will have really collected all those things that you have studied that will enable you to solve your question one. Right. So let me quickly tell you about my piece of experience. You know, piece of is one of those bulky, bulky textbooks in ICANN. It has a lot of topics, but ICANN has been able to streamline it for us. 
they divided it into four sections. I think we have public finance, we have um, budgeting, <laughs> excuse me, we have budgeting, we have a report and audit, and we have introduction to finance, uh, introduction to public sector finance and the likes. Question can come from any, any, uh, any angle from these ones that I've mentioned. Ensure you cover all of those things, but trust me, I can we always cover those four categories: introduction, report and audit, budgeting, and then um, budgeting and public finance. Public finance is very easy to read; it's just about five topics or so. Question will always come from from there, and those questions will likely come from section C. So, if you have gone through that public finance, you have read it, you understood it. There's no calculation. There's something that you can easily read and recall. So once you have done that for section C, you already have enough, 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 um, um, enough mark from section C that you can now leverage on the remaining to balance it all. So just imagine that you're able to solve your two questions from section C correctly, and you have thirty. What you just need more is twenty, and you will get it from the remaining, from the remaining question, right? So for my piece of my piece of will probably be, um, maybe because of the question that I solved in the exam, will probably be one of one of the easiest paper I have ever written in ICANN because the question one came from budgeting and you will know that budgeting is, is not that hard. For piece of will, I think we have the traditional budgeting, we have the incremental budgeting, we have the zero-based budgeting and one other budgeting like that. So they, they, they ask us on budgeting. They just give us some figures and they ask us that, okay, increase this by 5% yearly, decrease this one by 10%, this one increase by this, this one. So that is just what they did. But guess the trick that I can, I can, I can use for that question. The question is simple, you know what to do, but the question is a lot. It, it was much that if you start with it and you are not you are not um meticulous in your calculation you can miss it what did i do is what i'm advising you today that i did i started from session c even though i'm excited that the question one is very simple i know what to do since i already know what to do i know that i will spend less time doing what i I want to do for that for that question. So I started from session C, then I came back to it. So and there's one instru instruction in the paper. They tell us that answer question one. They tell you two from session B, two from section C. And now I'm telling you that um, I'm telling you that you start from section C. So it's possible that when you are when you start from section C, there might not be enough time for you to solve section a question so this is what i do i time myself right i think they allow us to there's always a work clock in the exam or so i time myself once it is 45 minutes to the end of the exam that is when whatsoever thing that i am doing i try to wrap up and come to section a because the instruction says that answer section a section a is compulsory so you can attempt it, but what you write may not be correct. But for the fact that you have followed that instruction, I'm not saying that there is additional marco, but that uh, that act that you have done, following the instruction as a way of um, improving your score overall, it has a way of improving it. So ensure that you only separate time, like 45 minutes, especially when you you do you don't even really have much understanding on how to solve question one 45 minutes come to section a now start solving question a. question a always have babies and uh, one a one b one c 1d if it is 1d that you can start with five marks tackle it leave it go to the next one one e two marks tackle it leave it go to the next one one b you can solve small parts, tackle it, leave enough space so that when you remember anything, you come back to it. You go to the next one. So don't don't start from it's not it's not compulsory for you to start from one A. You can start from one C, move to one F. Just ensure that you label them 
appropriately you label them correctly if you are starting it with one a let it be one a write your one a on top let it be clear if it is one c that you are starting with write it let it be clear so that the examiner the person that is marking it will know that okay this one is from one c this is one these are some of the mistakes that we make in exam some of us we just write all our solutions and we expect the lecturer the examiner to see it you are forgetting that you are not the one marking your script you are the only one that knows what you intend to write or what you are trying to address. The examiner does not know. He only sees what you have written and that is what he will assess you on. So as we are also rushing to meet up with time, ensure that your writing is legible. Be legible. Let next, uh, the person that is assessing you be able to read what you are writing. Don't be in rush that you will not start mumbling everything together. Write legibly leave space if you have answered one here you can leave like two nines go to one b so that your work will be will be will be good to see will be will be attractive and anybody that wants to mark it we have that um that attraction to read patiently what you have written unlike when unlike when you mumbled everything together and lastly what what i'm also going to say is that the time that you will use Let's say, for instance, now let me give it a scenario. Let's say I'm solving one question in section A. Okay. Let's say the question is five marks. I've started solving it and I've got it to a point. I'm about to round up. With what I've written, I've assessed myself that, okay, well, I'm going to get three. But I now want to write one or two things just to see if I can increase it. I've already written some points i've written some keywords i've done some calculation that can guarantee me three out of five what i do at that point is that i will leave it i'll try to wrap that that solution up i will leave it it is better for me to leave the remaining two and go and tackle another question that i know that i can get higher mark than struggling to complete that solution so that i can get five marks i don't know if you understand what i'm saying I started solving a question. The question is five marks. What I have written so far within the shortest time frame that I have can give me three marks, at least based on my own assessment, using the worst case scenario, can give me three marks. But let's say I now remember one sentence that I need to add that can increase it by just one mark to give me four marks. I would rather use that time to go and tackle another question that I know that within one minute I'll be able to solve and get maybe five, maybe 10. Or 15. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do not be tempted to hard point to hard um sentences to keep populating one question. So for instance, now a question that carries five math. Now I won't expect you to write half page, although it's possible for some courses. I won't expect you to write half page for question that carries three marks. Just put the key points there. That is what the, the, the examiner is interested in. Put the key points, ensure the terminologies that address that question is used. Once you do that, you are good to go. But if we keep on explaining, 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 like Bonner Boy said, you just explain tire, no evidence at the end of the day. Put the key points there and move on. Go and use that time to tackle fresh questions that you can get big, big, um, big points from, and you can compensate. Uh, apologies for that. Um, it was the network for my end. So I was trying to reiterate those things, those key points that I can really say helped me from for preparing for. I can understand yourself. What's your motivation? What's your strength? What's your background? Do you have accounting related background? If yes, would you love to 
go for studies, go for tutorial, or you read yourself. If you are going to read yourself, you need enough time. Don't put yourself under undue pressure by trying to cover 1,000 and something, something pages within two weeks. Don't kill yourself. Even your brain will not be happy with you. So start <laughs> early so that you can structure it and you can be consistent, right? Seek knowledge, seek help from people that have um, that have written the course and have passed it. Probably they have their judgments that they can share with you. Solve past question. Solve past question. I solved nothing less than 70 questions for each of those papers, right? So solve. Let, let, let your head be the past question bank that when you see the question, not only will you be able to solve it, we can even tell which which diet it came from, what page, what the examiner twisted in this one that looks like that one. You'll be able to analyze the question and you'll be able to solve it, right? So you have to do that. Then you have to seek help from your from people around you in terms of um um your reading group if you have any so that they can motivate you then pray to God, right? So for the papers that we are talking about to uh, talking about the transition um transition for me is um is quite straightforward right because tax as um schedules that you have to follow so for instance if you want to compute company income tax you know what um you know how to start you know how to compute your adjusted profit you know how to identify your allowable expenses, your disallowable expenses, allowable income and disallowable income, all those things you have to understand them, follow the schedule. I am, um, tax is very, very, very straightforward that it has given you the format, just understand the format. Yeah. Beyond understanding that, okay, this one is disallowable expenses, you have to understand why it is a disallowable expense. Now, for instance, and the big provision, general provision is disallowable expense because in the face of the FS, it's something that is allowed. You will see it in the, in the face of the financial statement. But for tax, they cannot they cannot understand it. Is it wholly? Yeah, is it reasonable? Is it ex exclusive? Is it necessary? If they look at as uh, provisions are not necessary, they disallow it except for specific provisions that is trying to address something, you know that, oh, this one is for this, this one is for, that is why they allowed it. These provisions, yeah. they allow, you see question, in one question, they allow a provision. In yeah. another question, they disallow the provision. So you have to understand why is it allowed here and it was not right. allowed in this one. I so you, you have to understand those things, right? You must be able to compute your capital allowance. That is one of the pitfalls for many students calculation of capital allowance. These things they have schedule, they have rates that you must follow. Take time to understand it. If you understand that part, you're you cannot go to other materials like I have said and broaden your understanding about it. So once you're able to do that, you arrive at your 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 accessible profit then you can, can apply your 30 percent and your um educational tax to it thank you, you get thank so you very much, that is about tax it has format and there's one thank part of tax to that i don't know maybe students don't usually I, don't I mean they don't usually read that side it's all this essay part introduction to tax administration and the likes the ones that tells you about how tax started, the canon of taxation, the um, um, advantage or importance of um, taxation, a lot of other story, how to file for appeal, how to file for objection, all those things. I can be definitely set questions from there. And those ones are what will relieve the time that you have spent in solving a question that has calculation. Because when you are treating a question that has calculation, you have to be meticulous. You have to take your time to understand that. Ah, what's happening now? Hey, why's my network tripping off? I think a lot of us has had network Apologies, issues. Apologies, my network Particularly is, those of us who are using M2N. Okay, if you are still there, 
Yes, I think we've had a lot of network issues today, particularly those of us that are using MTN, right? A lot of yeah. us have had network issues today, and that, yes. that I think that is what is causing it. Do we still have any other questions for Mr. Samuel? Does any okay. of us have any questions? Yes, Moyo Sore, could you unmute your microphone, right, and ask your question? I see Anna in the crowd. Why, right after Moyo Sore, we'll take Anna's question. So we'll take all the questions at the same time so that Mr. Samuel can give us answers at once, right? Let's go with Moyo Sore first. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Samuel. Good evening, everyone. It has, this has been a very detailed, a very detailed session. In fact, yes. I'm very happy that I joined. However, I just have two questions. And the first is, um, you said you said you you read one paper for one month when you were preparing. So my question is, at what point did you go back to revise? Like, say you read PSAF in December, you read PM in January, like that, like that. Like, at what point? Because if you read and then you don't go back to it, there's a tendency that you forget some of the things you've read. So at what point did you go back to those things, to the papers that you've read previously? Then the second question is how to summarize your study pack in such a way that you do not miss out on key points or subtopics. That's, that's one challenge that I'm having because I'm trying my best to make sure that my, my summary note is detailed. By the end of the day, I find out that my summary note is almost as long as the study pack. So how can we go about that? Thank you very much. Thank you, Moyo. Um, Mr. Samuel, just help us make a note of those questions so you can give answers one after the other, right? The next person in the queue, uh, we have Tunde raising up his hand. Tunde, you can unmute your microphone and ask your question. Is Tunde there, please? Good evening. Good evening. We can hear you. Yeah, I want to ask. Um, Mr. Samuel said he's, he's, I mean, he, he solved as many questions as possible. Like he said, like 70 questions, 70 past questions. And he studied, I mean, he solved it back to back. I will. Mr. identify where he died and all that. Now, I remember there's one thing of the guy that came on this. Uh, where, sorry, I've forgotten his name. Uh, and he said that we shouldn't bother too much. Much on the past question, that we should lay more emphasis on our study back, study it very well, know it, and put that in note and revise it well. So, like, it's contradictory. Okay, so we have another person asking a question, right? Um, I will just read this one out of the of the chat box, and this is from Anna. It says, "Okay, um, there's Shaya, four." Anna. Shaya, yeah? please. Yeah. I I didn't get the the last question clearly. I think my okay. network was functioning. Can you please recap? Mr. Tunde, could you please um, ask your question again? Because my I lost you in between two, but I thought Mr. Samuel got you. Okay. Can you hear me yes, now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I said, Mr. Samuel said in um, doing inspiration, it's after reading, solved many past questions. Okay. I think specifically, he said about 70 past questions, and he could even identify which diet. Those questions were from when he, he sees them. And I also said that I remember that one somebody came on this call as well, telling us that we should not dwell too much on past questions, but we should study the pack, take a summary, and revise it well. So okay. now I just I just want a better understanding. How can you marry these two together? Solve the okay. question. And somebody said, don't solve too much questions. Somebody said, solve questions as much as I, possible. I think, I think so this that. speaker you are talking about is the last webinar we had, Mr. Ade Doni. I remember yes, very well. Yes, yeah, yes, when yes, he yes. Made of the study pack. I'm just going to quickly yeah. chip in here that, you know, there are different people and there are different techniques for different people. And um, before Mr. Samuel started, he said something about self-awareness. 
knowing yourself, knowing what time you assimilate, and that also extends to knowing the technique that you assimilate better with. But we let him answer that question. I just said quickly tip it in, right? I'll leave him to answer that question. There's a question in the I'll just read the questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Tinde. I'll just read the question in the chat box so that Mr. Samuel can take note of that. So when he has answers for us, then we go back to the crowd. Every other person raising their hands will take them. We have one from Olu Kotsun Bukola, which says, Good evening, Samuel. Your success story is really motivating and inspiring, but preparing for exam is quite overwhelming. How do you advise with preparation and time management? And also at this point, if I start studying, can success be attained? This is our question. There is one more in the chat from Anna Oguntade. Uh, Mr. Samuel, can you confirm that you understood that question? Yes, yes, I do. All right. I'll move on to Anna Oguntade. She says, how did he undo the daily task considered the time he spent reading? Okay, Anna, do you mean his own daily tasks, such as going to work, you know, going to church, eating, and all those kind of things? If that is correct, just um, leave yes in the chat box so that we are sure that we understand the question that you are asking, so we do not give you wrong answers. Can you say that again, please? Yes, I mean, um, how he handled his work. Yes, exactly. Like, oh, all right. All right. Yeah. all right, no problem. Thank you very much. Any other questions, guys? I want to take all the questions at once so we have enough time to go through the answers. Any other question? All right, in the absence of no, we'll open the floor for Mr. Samuel. Good evening. Okay, there is one in the chat. I'll just read. It says, Good evening, Samuel, from Anya G. Chuk. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Just pardon me, please. He says, good evening, Samuel. I am indeed inspired by a success story. I am also a beneficiary of the Diamond Scholarship. I wrote my foundation level last diet, now writing my skill level of six papers. The truth is, I don't know how to go about it. I am overwhelmed by everything. And my nature of work is not giving much time to read. How do you advise I do? I had thoughts lately to break the courses. So do you mean like you want to break the course into different diets and like into different exams and not write everything in the same diet like this may just uh, confirm that please. Oh yes, that was actually what I had. All right, all right, thank you very so, much. Looking at the so, other two months remaining, like what do you advise I do to like manage uh, the okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Samuel, please take note of that because there's one more question in the chat, but I just want to read that then we start giving answers. This is from Aminat Bilu. She says, thank you for all you have said. Is there any advice you can give an undergraduate preparing for this exam? As currently, I am still in school and I'm also preparing for my school as well. I plan on reading after my school exam finishes. Hey! <laughs> Okay, I will have Mr. Samuel answer it too, but this one is already a red flag. Oh. He said, I'm planning on reading after my school exam finishes. I mean, could you please confirm when your school exam is going to finish, first of all? Yes, I was actually going to ask that question too. When is the exam going to finish? I mean, are you there? You can drop. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. My school exam evening. is going to end March 9th. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Thank you. And the exam is All right, Mr. Samuel, just take note of that. So we'll take the answers from the top, right? Everybody, it's time to get answers to our question. The floor is yours. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much. I'm glad we've been able to get one or two points for from everything that I've said so far, and I can't really wait to celebrate you guys. I'm rooting for your success in all that you do. If you lose motivation, just remember my story. Remember today, remember Grow Light, that some people are expecting you to be successful, and we are rooting for you, okay? So I'll start from um, the first question. 
um that was talking about at what point do i go back to revising my notes um because i said i started studying early remember i said that i started studying early and i scheduled one paper for one month so after once i once i start the first thing that i'm doing is just summarizing right that's the first thing i did when i take a topic i don't really read to understand per se right i read just to quickly summarize it so if i read one sentence in the pack right the next two three sentences are not actually as important as the first sentence so the next two three or four sentences are just helping me to understand what is written in that first sentence so if i'm going to summarize i will take that first sentence alone and that will be what i will read and i will understand then i will put down in my own words not leaving out the keywords if you remember i'm always emphasizing don't leave out the keywords don't leave out the terminologies so that is how i did my jotting i think there was a question too like that that how was i able to summarize okay i think it's the second question too so that was how i did it so if i pick the first sentence i will read understand try to if there's any word that is ambiguous that i cannot explain i'll look for the meaning and try to relate it then possibly put and put it in my own in my own words in my own journey so that's how i start so when i do that it won't take me the whole 30 days to do the summary remember so once i'm done with this summary of of everything once i've summarized them even within that month right i start revision so when i read a topic once i complete a topic before i move to the next topic i read again i ensure that i have understood then i move to the next topic so i was able to do that because i have enough time to accommodate that so as i'm reading if i read two topics and i've summarized it before i move to the next topic which is chapter three i will revise chapter one and chapter two first to refresh my memory then i go to chapter three once i'm done with chapter three before i move to chapter four to that's how i go back i read again so it's as if as i'm summarizing i'm reading i'm revising them again so the only thing i did do was that i didn't solve past question when i first started i was just doing the reading and revision summarizing read summarize revise that was what i was doing so i had finished the summary the summary of the paper before i think i finished march yes i finished everything by march though some did not take me up to 30 days so i had to bring in other other topics immediately i'm done i bring in another paper she gets so i finished around april so it was that april that i started solving past questions right and i was able to i set the target that i must cover 10 diets so starting from 2020 2021 till um that will be five years back now will be 2016 or so. can do this if i started later than the date i started i won't be able to cover 70 questions but the 70 question is just for me to be exposed to we to the way i am supposed to solve question in exam let me give you one trick i can we ask you that um i can we ask you that um briefly discuss the principles of i'm just using this question now okay briefly discuss the accounting question accounting conversion stated in this and that and that and that they asked you to briefly discuss but you know in the pathfinder i discovered that <laughs> if they want to answer the question they will first list those stuff one two three point four i've listed those points okay then i will now start picking them one after the other writing about them that is when the discussion have now started it may not be more than three or four lines i've briefly the question asked me to briefly discuss right so i've discussed it so when the examiner see that kind of question 
the examiner is attracted to reading what you have written because he, he has seen your organization that, oh, this person actually wrote out the point. So it shows that this person understands very well. So, and when you, when you check, mm, there's this part of Pathfinder that shows the score for each of those things. By the time you go and check the score, you will not see listing one, one over two, then explanation <laughs> 2.5, something like that. You will not be one to that. But they only asked me to briefly discuss or explain this thing. They didn't ask me to list and explain. But if you just explain directly, you have missed the point for the listing like that. And imagine missing those points in tranches like that for each question you answer. It's going to deduct your mark at the end of the day. And you will come out and say, oh, I answered the question very well. I did this. I don't know what happened. This may be one of the scenarios that briefly explain so but you you have added the listing you have written it out there so that is what pathfinder we expose you to we expose you to the way you are supposed to answer question let's say for instance now you are talking about a standard maybe they gave you a, a case study now in one of those questions in fr and they are talking about um let's say inventory now they are talking about the valuation should you use first in first out or last in first out when you want to explain what I discover in Pathfinder is that they will start with the with the standard and we know inventory, IES2. They'll say this and that, this and that is IES2. IES2 says that this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that. Now, for this question, this and that, this and that happened. And so we need to value the inventory using this method, LIFO. LIFO says that this comes in, this goes out, this is how we should value it. Then you now solve the question. If you do that for any examiner, I can guarantee you, out of the out of any mark that is apportioned for that question, you will get you will get a reasonable percentage. But what most of us do is that once we have read the question, we just start solving it straight up. We start solving straight up. And you will get the mark, but you will not get the full mark. That is just it. So some sometimes it's those extra to extra. If I move to the next, to the next, um, to the next topic. So um, the first question I believe has been answered. The second question is how to summarize. Like I've said, I read the first sentence. The first concept will tell me what I need to know. The remaining sentences is just to build on the first sentence so that I can properly understand. So once I read those sentences together. I focus more on the first sentence. Now we rewrite it in the best way that I can understand, not leaving out the keyword. So that's how you summarize. That is how I did my shape. You still have to understand how yours work, right? So another one says that, okay, the next question says that in the previous webinar that, okay, um, the speaker emphasized that not to dwell more on past question, right? Just read and understand, fine. That is just one way of doing it. But for me, I had to solve past question because I was curious as to how to provide my answer so that I don't miss, right? I've given you a scenario, briefly discuss. If I have not read, if I have not studied Pathfinder like that, I wouldn't have known that I'm supposed to list before explaining, okay? I will have just answered the question still. Am I going to get my mark? Yes, I'll get my mark. Will I pass the paper? Of course, I'm going to pass. But for me to have exceptional results, I need to do what my finder did. And that was basically what I did for all my papers. Right? I did that for tax, especially, PSAV, especially. FR does not really have much of those um, questions, but then you can also apply it to them. So it depends on your time if you have enough time to solve past question like a lot of past question do that but if time does not permit you again just ensure that you solve at least maybe three, three questions on every topic that you have read so that you can expose you to the way question are being said in the study pack you will not see life exam questions there the questions you will see in the study pack are just except 
what they bring from normal exam question. The pathfinder will expose you to how exam questions looks like and how to prepare for them. So looking at the time that we have now, if you are writing a lot of paper at this point of year and you have not started reading, right? Let's say you are just starting, um, 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 you, are start, you are just starting preparing for ICANN now and you have like six papers to write from now to the exam. In my own candid opinion, I will ask you to break them because the time is not really, really there for you now to start reading six papers. Some people do it, they read or they study for the six paper and they pass it. That is them. Probably they, they must have been preparing sometime before or they have background in accounting and they can easily assimilate. But if that is not your case, I will advise you break it. You can write TD, you can write two. And if it's just one that you will start with, please. It is better. It is better you write one paper, put in all your effort, you pass it, than taking three papers, you pass one, you fail the others, right? It's better to maximize your preparation instead of focusing on, it's just like your preparation. If I'm going to gauge it for three papers now, you prepare 30, 40, 30. That is like um, 100 out of 300. Why not? shift the preparation on just one and have the present level of preparation and one. Oh, okay all right let me quickly move to the next question so the next question is um um my goodness my goodness okay the second the next question is uh the question bukola asked okay so i think that i, I stylishly touched it so if you are just starting at this point regardless of the numbers of paper that you are writing. Personally, I believe time is already against you. If you have, let's say, five papers to write, you can break it. I think that also talks to Chuku Ebube, Chuku Ebube. Yes, Chuku the Ebube question too. At this point, it's not much to take the whole six at the go because you don't really, really have the time. So you just have to be deliberate to create the time. So why, why are you going to overburden yourself when you know that preparing at this time is somehow, it, it will be somehow pressurizing so you can break it if it is true that you can take fine you still have march you still have april to prepare for your exam so within those two months if you are a fast learner if you understand good if you assimilate fast right you can take as much as you want to but understand yourself know your capacity know what you can do and what you cannot if yours is to be breaking it be writing each diet each diet be writing two papers per diet please do that the point is as you are writing you are passing and you are progressing instead of preparing for six and you pass on face on why not streamline it to two focus your attention on them and clear them then you move to the next one so i believe that has answered that question so the next question is about um is from Anna. Anna was asking, okay, trying to look for the question again. Uh, I didn't take a note. Okay, I'm looking for the question in the comment section again. Uh, okay. All right, the question was talking about how I was able to manage my daily tax at, at the office and some other things. So remember I said something like leverage on the people around you. So what I mean is that there are some tax that you need to do, your daily chores that you will need to do, you can leverage on people around you. Like me, I was staying with my family when I was preparing for the exam, so I have people to help me to one or two things. However, there are some things that I have to do myself. That is why I said during the day I do all that is required of me. And all these guys, the network is really bad. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, 
I have things that I was doing that is a must that I must do. So during the day, what I used to do is we have break. So that break session, what I do is to go and sleep. I'll just go and sleep. I'll look for a good place in the office to go and sleep because I will definitely be tired. And when I get home, the first thing I do is to sleep. So I sleep for at least two or three hours to stretch my body and relax the brain before I start. So my daily task was not really that much, okay, so so to speak. But then I was I was still trying to do do what I need to do. So if if you were to look at a at at a full employee now, you may not have that opportunity, right? So to read during the day may be a challenge. That means you have to resort to reading at night, okay? And the reason why me I have to study for that long at night was because I'm studying for five papers. I have uh, conditions to meet up with and I have enough time to do that. So if now you just want to start your own reading, I think it is better to restructure your papers. Maybe you study, for only two as it is now and you can limit your own reading hours it's not enough to do five hours stretch you can limit it to two just understand yourself know how you can function best and work with that okay i believe that has answered anna's yeah. question yes it does and i've also touched uh a boobay question so the last question is about um um i mean not she said she's currently an yeah, undergraduate. Yeah. Okay. So when we say and <laughs> as you are as you as an uh, as an undergraduate, you have you have this privilege above others because the, your only job de description is to study. I don't think it's it's actually right for you to wait till when you finish your school exam for you to start. You can start now, but don't put much um time to i can till you finish your exam since your exam will be finishing in march right you can start now i will advise you to start now right first determine the number of papers that you are going to write based on the time the resources and your strengths then start now if it is two hours that you can do per day for i can invest that two hours be consistent consistent with with it then before the end of march you'll be amazed at the topics you you will have covered then you starting that much okay so start now while you are preparing for your school exam i mean you are writing exams two exams so you just have to do the same thing that you are doing for exam for i can just um i would just say reduce the time that you spend on i can now while you focus on your exam then after march you can swing fully to study for i can and if you have the chance for weekend lectures to our advice that you start attending so that that can cons compensate you for the hours that you could not use to study for ICANN exams. All right. Yeah, so, thank you so, so much, Mr. Salmo, for yes, taking your time thank you so much. to explain and break down all these things. You know, the most amazing so part of the explanation is that the way you were able to detail it, it covered a lot of things that we are even already addressing on Grow Light, right? And yes. this includes time management, planning, mm. creating study plan. You know, this plan will include how you study the time that you study, and you even get reminded whenever exactly. you, uh, the time that you set, you will get a reminder that is telling you to come and study. Then you'll be able to track syllabus mm -hmm. by syllabus paper by paper yes. we also have fast questions on the app application wow. where you can go that's over fantastic passes. yes to that's test fantastic. Your understanding. so if this is new to you just go to www.ourgrowlight.com i'm going to leave it in the chat so you can go okay. there and join and create an account to start reading then for people that are just reading now in fact eh, it is really painful for me because we have started our reading challenge for these mid diets, though you can still join, but we mm. always know that the earlier the better. The only reason it can go through past question and judge down at the same time is because it started since December. Exactly. If you are just starting now, that might be a little bit impossible for you to do, right? Exactly. But you can still join us when you sign up to our website. And also, for those who are new here that don't know us before, like I said, we have a community of 
over 2,000 accountants. I've just put it in the chat box now. Our website to go and create your own profile and create a study plan. And also our community of accountants. It's a WhatsApp community. So once you click this link, you'll be taken straight to our WhatsApp group where all of us that are studying for this ICANN exam, we are all there together. Both people that have passed your level and people that have not gotten to your level, we are over 2,000. So any questions you might have, any difficulty you might have, put it in the group. We will provide answers. That's what we are there for. That's why we are a community. Just click on this link in the chat box or visit our growlight.com to set up your study plan. Everything we are set to do, if you pay the attention, it is on our app. Funny enough, it does not work for us. So, hey, I have to enter his DM. <laughs> as a top performer to beg you to be here is not even part of our company at all that tells you that we are doing things to to make your icon journey easier easier we are looking at things that successful people have done before we are then we are bringing it on the platform for you and the best part of it is that the platform is entirely free free for you at your disposal so you i wish i had this kind of opportunity during my time <laughs> And also, I really challenge on the 30th day for everybody that has got because we have streaks. Once you can read consistently, you'll be getting streaks, streaks. So everybody that has gotten up to 30 streaks, the challenge is a 100 day reading challenge. For everybody that gets 30 streaks, you are going to get 2,000 Naira July credit, which can be used to make purchase on the app, right? So if you are just joining now, there is still another, we have only just covered 30 days. You still have two more 30 days inside 100 days to cover. So then you can still cover some syllabus, especially if you are writing, you know, one or two more papers, just come and join us and be consistent. Then if you have any question, put it on our group chat. Let us be asking you, please and please. Nobody can write, I can alone. You are not an island. Like you said, you have to leverage your community. You have to leverage your family. Uh -huh. Family can be the one at home. If you know you don't have anybody at home, you are living alone, you are becoming you know, so that we can be reminding you when it's time for you to read. When you have any questions, you can ask because we are here for you. We'll We are really very grateful for your time. God bless you. Have a fantastic evening, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for attending. Thank you, Mr. Samuel. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for putting this initiative together. I appreciate it. And by I think by June, I'll be I'll be ready to celebrate with everybody on this platform. Thank yes, you so much. So Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining.